Normally, when we come to church, when we come to Mass, we are given words of encouragement, words of hope. Well, that's not the case today. The readings today are rather challenging for us. They, they don't easily enter our minds and our hearts. We have the first reading from Jeremiah. He's pretty angry at God. You duped me, O Lord, and I let myself be duped. That image of being duped is a horrible thing to think about, huh? Being duped, being fooled, being tricked. It's like he has a compulsion in him to preach God's truth, God's word to those who don't want to hear it, and he gets hurt badly. And yet, it comes to him again, again and again. Poor Jeremiah. Jeremiah and Jesus actually are quite similar. Both taught in parables to the people that would listen to them. Both wept for their beloved city, Jerusalem. Both were rejected by their people, scourged, imprisoned, and put on trial for their lives. Both prophesied the destruction of Jerusalem by outside forces. Little wonder, then, in last week's Gospel, when Jesus said to the disciples, Who do people say that I am? One of them said, Some say, Jeremiah. When Israel did not respond, did not obey Jeremiah's call, God's call through the prophet Jeremiah, to reform their ways, Jeremiah predicted there would be a new covenant. And this is the covenant that Jesus began on the night before he died. It's the covenant we recall every time we come to the Eucharist, come to the altar. It's a covenant that is sealed by blood as all the covenants have always been sealed, but this time it's the blood of Christ, sealed by the sacrifice of the new lamb of the new Passover, the lamb of God that we proclaim, behold, the lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. To contemporary eyes, Jesus willingly giving his life over as a sacrifice on behalf of humanity is really kind of a repulsive concept in the ways of the world. Truth be told, even among many Catholics, the word sacrifice has gotten a lot less play since I was born, I would say. And I say that because I was born just before the Second Vatican Council began, and it was that council of all the bishops around the world, that beautiful, wonderful gathering that has made who we are today as far as how we worship, how we celebrate Mass. One of the things they did was they focused less on the altar of sacrifice, which was what the Church always focused on, and focus more on this altar being a table of fellowship. Why did they do that? They did that because these were men, these were persons who remembered that the Catholic world, as well as others, had just gone through two world wars. And were now, at that time in the early 60s, late 50s, living under the threat of nuclear warfare. Many of us weren't around. I was two years old that the Cuba Missile Crisis happened. But this informed our church leaders when they came together to say, we need to really get together on this and focus on how we are commonly together as human beings. We need to celebrate as a family of humankind the Eucharist. Both, of course, are true. This is a table of fellowship, for sure. It is also an altar of sacrifice. None of us likes sacrifice. It's painful letting go of our time, giving over our time, sacrificing our time, our resources to help somebody in need financially. That's scary, it's painful. It's understandable, then, that Peter would say to Jesus, God forbid this should happen to you, Lord. Because really he knows Jesus isn't going alone. 
he and the others are coming with Jesus. God forbid this should happen to us, Lord. And Jesus' response, as we know, is rather chilling for those of us who don't like sacrifice, for those of us who, like me, would say along with Peter, don't do this, oh, let's not do this. Uh -uh -uh. His response, get behind me, Satan. Satan? Am I acting like Satan when I don't want to sacrifice? When I don't want to share myself? I'd also be like Peter if I said that in forgetting that Jesus said, the Son of Man must go to Jerusalem to suffer, to die, and be raised again. What Jesus does in his sacrifice is he eliminates that fear. Maybe not all of it. It's still fearful to sacrifice, to let go, especially of one's own life. Of course it's fearful. But because we know now there's something more after death, that there is a fullness of life, a new life, and that gives us hope. For Jesus and for his disciples, for us today, there's no way around it. Sacrifice is a part of life. And we can't go under it, we can't go over it, around it, but we must go through it. As Robert Frost once said, and I'd like to quote, the best way out is through. For those who are coming to this table, this altar for the first time, to celebrate, receiving and becoming fully part of the body of Christ, when you come forward today and I hold up the piece of bread, the broken body of Christ before your eyes and say to you, body of Christ, when you say amen, you're saying, and we all are saying, yes, yes, I believe. Yes, that is myself as well. Yes, I am called, as Paul calls us today in the letter to the Romans, to be a living sacrifice. I love my word origins, and I may have shared this once before with you, but it bears repeating at this time. The word sacrament, the common church word we use, it's why we're here, is from the Latin sacramentum. Ment means thing. Anytime you have the word ment, the, the, the suffix, ment is a thing. A thing about sacra, holy. A thing about the sacred. The holy, what is that? Another churchy word. It means other. Other, different, mysterious. It could be God, other, holy, yes. It could be each other, different. We cannot have, brothers and sisters, we cannot have a sacrament without making a sacrament, without doing a sacrament. And that word is sacra facere in the Latin, to do or make a holy thing, sacrifice. We cannot have a sacrament without a sacrifice. And that's clearly why Eucharist is the main of all of them. It's the one that draws all the other sacraments together, the baptism that we'll celebrate today with Arlene and with Laura. And it celebrates, it brings confirmation fully, that sense of being sealed with the Spirit, that these folks will be joined by Elizabeth, will be joined by Kendall Alexis and, and Brett, and by all of us, who continually struggle. We struggle to sacrifice, because we continue to live in a world that doesn't like sacrifice. That tells us we don't have to really sacrifice, that's for somebody else. Earn what you can, get as much as you can, live a great life. And that's a struggle for all of us to be in the world and to not be sharing as we know we really are called to. But those of us, and that's everyone here, we have sacrificed. Parents of a little baby know what sacrifice is all about. People in relationship know what sacrifice is all about. I'd rather do this, but she wants to do that. But what are you going to do? We sacrifice. And it feels right. 
It feels right because that is the Christ in us. That is God within. God whose essence is love, is letting go of sharing. The Paulist Fathers put out a book a number of years ago called Love is Letting Go of Fear. What a beautiful title. How true. But if God is love, as we believe God is, God is all about letting go of fear. And so here we are. As scary as sacrifice is, as scary as it is when we look upon a crucifix scene in our Catholic faith, we keep that body, the dead body of Jesus on that cross because we believe it's not just that sanitized cross, but our life is through Jesus' sacrifice. And that's what we celebrate here. The Eucharistic prayer I will pray this morning with you has a wonderful line in it. And if I can find it in my notes, <laughs> it talks about, we offer to you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. A direct reference to Paul today. That's us. That's why when I pray the prayer, if you come to church when I'm presiding, whenever I use this particular prayer, I say, we pray in thanksgiving, uh, we give you thanksgiving for this holy, and I point to the holiness of the bread, the other now, the body of Christ, and living sacrifice. That's you and me. In fact, sometimes I can't even tell when I'm praying for the Holy Spirit to come and change these gifts. I see you as gifts. You're a gift to me. Change these gifts. Change everyone in this building to know that they're not just who they say they are in the world, but they're also the living Christ. All of us, together. So this is something to celebrate today. On our own, we can't do this. You guys, you're not going to be able to do it on your own. That's why we come every week. Because we need God's grace, God's power, God's strength. We need to be reminded because the world is going to keep on telling us sacrifice is silly, it's stupid, but it's not. Those of us who are truly Christian know that this is the way to life, that the world has it wrong. So let's pray for ourselves. We pray for all of us that we're able to let go of fear and we're able to celebrate our life in Christ.